Hello everyone, I am Dr. Aníbal Valentín and I'm an assistant professor and researcher at Universidad Central del Caribe Medical School in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. As you all know, we are currently going through a pandemic caused by a novel coronavirus that is causing the disease known as COVID-19. In this video, I will talk to you about our immune system and how it interacts with the virus in order to protect us. Please feel free to share this with your family, with your friends, with your teachers, and anyone who is interested in learning a little bit more about this topic. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Before we start, I want to define some terms that you will be hearing during the lecture. If at any time you hear these terms and you are not sure what I mean, please refer back to this slide. Let's start with SARS-CoV-2 which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. This is the official name of the coronavirus that is causing the actual pandemic. It is referred to as cov 2 because back in 2003, there was an epidemic caused by another coronavirus that was very similar to this one, and it was named SARS-CoV. COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. It is the name of the disease caused by SARS-CoV-2. Leukocytes are also called white blood cells and are the cells of the immune system. A pathogen is in any organism capable of causing a disease. It can be a virus, a bacterium, or any other organism. A lymphocyte is a type of leukocyte involved in the adaptive immune response. We will talk about the adaptive immune response later in the video. And finally, a cytokine is a chemical messenger used by immune cells to communicate with one another. The immune system is this phenomenal system made up of different organs and cells that is in charge of defending us from pathogens and other things that can make us sick. It is capable of recognizing viruses, toxins, parasites, things that can cause cancer, pollutants, and generate a response to get rid of them so we do not develop a disease. Our immune system is capable of generating two main responses. The innate immune response, also known as innate immunity, and the adaptive immune response, known as the adaptive immunity. When we get exposed to a pathogen, the innate immune response gets activated, followed by the adaptive immune response. However, both responses are always connected to one another through the function of many immune cells and the cytokines they produce. Remember that cytokines are the chemical messengers that leukocytes use to talk to one another. There are many different types of leukocytes and many of them are part of the innate immune response, while others are more active during the adaptive immunity. These leukocytes have different functions. Some of them are capable of killing pathogens, killing infected cells, producing antibodies, which we will talk about them later, and all of them produce many types of cytokines that allow them to communicate with each other. As I mentioned before, the innate immune response is the first response activated once we encounter a pathogen. It happens during the first 18 to 20 hours of infection, and it is characterized by the function of many cells that are capable of recognizing and killing the pathogens that are infecting us. Some of these cells are capable of eating those pathogens, a process known as phagocytosis, and all of them produce different types of cytokines, many of which will alert the cells of the adaptive immunity to start preparing for battle. For many infections, it is during the activation of the innate immune response that we start developing certain symptoms like fever, muscle aches, and chills. These symptoms are partially caused by the effect of cytokines on our body, and it is one way we can tell that our immune system is working. Now, Soon after the innate immunity is activated, the adaptive immune response kicks in and it can last up to 21 days and even more during certain infections. This response is characterized by the function of some leukocytes known as lymphocytes. There are too many types of lymphocytes. T cells, which can be either a helper or a cytotoxic T cell, and B cells or plasma cells, which are the one who produce antibodies. Similar to leukocytes from the innate immunity, lymphocytes also produce many different types of cytokines. 
Like I just mentioned, B cells are the lymphocytes capable of producing antibodies. And these are very important molecules in our immune response. Antibodies are proteins that circulate in our blood and are capable of recognizing and neutralizing pathogens. When an antibody neutralizes a pathogen, it prevents it from infecting other cells and it allows the immune system to get rid of it more efficiently. Another important fact about the adaptive immune response is that it can generate what is known as immunological memory. That means that every time we get infected by a pathogen, our immune system remembers it so that if it infects us a second time, we already know how to fight it before it can cause a disease. Immunological memory is the reason why vaccines are so important and so effective. When we get a vaccine, we teach our immune system how a specific pathogen looks like without generating the disease. And if we do get infected with that same pathogen, we already know how to fight it. So in other words, vaccines are really important and they do not cause autism. Now that you guys know about our immune system, do you think it can protect us from the SARS-CoV-2 infection? What do you think will happen to our immune system if it encounters this novel coronavirus? Before we address these questions, let's talk briefly about the SARS-CoV-2. This virus is considered a novel coronavirus because it is the first time that we detect it circulating within the population. There has been other coronaviruses like SARS and MERS and many others that can cause the common cold, but SARS-CoV-2 is the first time that we see it. When people get infected with this coronavirus, they can get symptoms like fever, cough, or difficulty breathing. For most people, it would feel like a common cold. Many patients, however, can be infected and won't present any symptoms at all. And although we do not know the exact reason for that, it could be that their immune systems are capable of neutralizing the virus early during infection, or that they have some limited immunity against other types of coronaviruses that is capable of defending them from this one. The SARS-CoV-2 enters our body through our nose and mouth, and probably also through our eyes. Once in our body, it travels to our respiratory system where it infects the cells lining the lungs. Once the cells are infected, they produce many viral particles that can be expelled from the body when the patient coughs or sneezes. How it is that this coronavirus infects our cells? On the surface of the virus, there's a protein called the spike protein that is capable of binding to the ACE2 receptor on the surface of the lung cells. The binding of these two proteins works like a lock and key and allows the virus to enter our cells. Once inside the cell, the virus gets replicated and creates many copies of itself that are released from those cells in order to infect neighboring cells. At that time, our immune system is going to be interacting with all those particles. So what happens when our immune cells encounter all these viral particles? Well, they start generating an immune response, which will be characterized by many leukocytes trying to kill the virus or virally infected cell. And there will also be production of antibodies that can neutralize the virus, as well as the production of many, many different cytokines. As we mentioned earlier, cytokines are chemical messengers that allow leukocytes to communicate with each other, and they induce many protective effects in our body. For example, some cytokines can act on the central nervous system and induce fever. Others can stimulate the bone marrow to produce more blood cells, while others can tell the liver to produce many proteins and other molecules that help us fight the virus better. Although the effect of cytokines during the immune response tends to be protective, overproduction of cytokines can have bad effects in our body. Overproduction of cytokines is what scientists call a cytokine storm, and it can affect our heart, our blood pressure, it can induce the formation of clots, it can affect our muscles, our kidneys, our liver, and basically our entire body. Certain patients with COVID-19 generate a cytokine storm and because this is a respiratory virus, one of the organs that gets strongly affected are the lungs. In these patients, the cytokine storm causes severe inflammation of the lung 
tissue destruction, and it can induce the lungs to fill up with fluids, making it very difficult for the patient to breathe. Not every patient with COVID-19 will generate a cytokine storm, but the ones that do, do have a really hard time recovering from the disease. We still don't know why only some patients develop these cytokine storms, but genetic differences, the strength of the immune response amongst, among patients, and the amount of virus between the patients are most likely involved. So far, we do not have a vaccine or a drug against this virus. However, there are many currently being tested. Until we get any drug or vaccine approved, it is important to keep practicing a good hygiene, social distancing, staying at home, and eating well, so that we are as healthy as possible in case we do get infected. And please be sure that science will win this battle. The last thing I want to tell you is that if you do happen to know a scientist, a physician, a nurse, or any other healthcare professional or first responder, please send them a thank you note. They're working against the clock to make sure we are all safe. They are the real heroes in this pandemic. Thank you all for your attention and please remember to stay home, stay healthy and be kind to one another.